Man, oh man. I am on one today. Um, uh, and in a way that makes me uh, slightly overwhelmed at the idea of sharing, but at the same time excited because I have found that the more I embrace what I'm feeling and share about those feelings, uh, I find that my process and your process are actually quite similar and that we learn from each other's ideas and thoughts and um, discomforts, you know, and that brings us closer and it, and it also brings out a side in us that allows us to grow through watching others do it as well. And so I welcome you on a little journey with me today, talking through something that I've been feeling really deeply and I'm kind of carrying myself. And I think, you know, for a while I have felt this pressure to, I don't know, is it, it, it perform, um, to build something, to create, to expand, to deliver. And I just don't feel uh, any traction in those areas. I feel quiet. I feel almost like I've been in hibernation. And for a while, I was kind of punishing myself about that. And then I had this thought that, you know, if I, if I don't go away, spring won't come for Jen. We must take time to slow down, get quiet, declutter, whether it's your space or your mind or your heart or all, so that you have room to grow because I think what's kind of been happening, especially coming out of these two years of being slower, we're, we're feeling this, this momentum towards harvest. We have to harvest, and it's this perpetual year-long harvest. And I don't know about you, I just don't have it. And I find when then I try to harvest things that aren't coming naturally, it comes off very forced. It comes off ingenuine, and I'm saying things that I don't truly feel, and it separates me from who I'm trying to help which is you. And so I'm at this place now. So that's where I've been. But where where I've I've been feeling this last 4 weeks of my life is almost like a readiness to create and to build and to share. And yet the it's been you know, I've got this energy, I've got things to say, I, I, and yet I'm scared. It's like, okay, now I'm ready, but now I'm scared. Scared of what? Gosh, if you could jump inside my mind and tell me what it is, that would really help. <laughs> I don't know. And I think that that's why this podcast was so important for me to go through today is that we don't have to know that why exactly we're scared, but to know that it's a feeling to me when I have resistance towards something, it's my radar to take a deeper look at it. What am I avoiding? What am I worried about? What am I, uh, am I excited about doing a good job, right? You know, who knows? It comes in lots of forms. Um, but I was lucky enough to have a few days in Denver um, this last week, and I got to meet with my mentor, dear friend, and just brilliant man in the wellness industry. His name's Adam Bornstein. Uh, the best way I can describe him, he's the ghost in the machine, and he's the man behind so many great men and women building businesses, building connections, building opportunities for us to learn and grow brands and also reach people so we can help them. And he said something to me. I wrote it down so I don't mess it up. It's an Adam Bornstein original. He goes, well, Jen, evidence is confidence. And I thought, huh. You know, like confidence isn't this weird thing that you pull out of the air and like, oh, I feel confident about this. We have to have evidence of what we're doing. So we start to build, you know, not just consistency in it or, or, um, what's the other word I'm thinking of consistency and like your ability to do it, like your capability to do it, but like your confidence to execute and I know for me to do something is to know. And I think we're a lot 
all of us are very similar to that. There are very few people that I know that can just leap of faith and go for it and say, listen, I know I'm going to be okay. So if doing is knowing, I thought, what ways can I start to apply this to what I'm doing? And I, I immediately, this is just me personally. I was looking at my workouts. I'm like, are there ways I can start to gather evidence about my capability? And so I started picking categories in my life that I'm actually quite poor at. One is running. Um, if you've known me for any amount of time, you know that I don't enjoy it. You know that I run from running or, <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, you usually only see me running to the dance floor. Like that's about the, the distance I'll go for. And I've been running. I'm, I've been, I've been on a treadmill and starting to pick up speed and pick up distance and pick up volume. Uh, another area was Spanish learning Spanish, practicing it, saying it more out loud, using it more when I'm traveling, when I'm interacting with people. Um, another big one for me was speaking up in conversations. I tend to be a little bit shy at times and go with the flow. And I, it's not about being argumentative, but if I have something to say or something I need, I'm speaking up. And so these are just three small categories I chose, um, which, you know, don't feel very small to me at times, but I have seen through just trying these things, I have been building confidence in them. And I find it doesn't just live in those specific areas. So it's like, if if you look at the workout example, today I did a workout, I didn't include running, but man, I was way more confident because I know I've been getting good at hard stuff for me. Another great example is the speaking up in conversations. I'm doing this podcast, you know, like I'm, I'm doing something that no, I've been so nervous to do by myself. And it's speaking up in conversations in my daily life has helped me be here with you right now. And I want to bring up this example because it's so good. I'm grabbing a, a, a magazine clipping from, it's a fitness journal from September of 2014. This is how long, I'm such a pack rat. But it's a story about Diana Nyad. And it, it, it lends itself to what I'm talking about so much because Diana Nyad, if you don't know, she's the only human being, male or female, to have swam, uh, swam from Cuba to the United States, which is Key West. She has made it part of one of the hardest stretches of water in the glow, on the planet, right? And she's done it. And if you actually look at her story, she attempted it five times. She didn't try once, get it once, try it twice, get it five attempts. In her fifth one, she did it. Spoiler alert. And by the way, if you want to hear more of that story, I highly recommend her TED Talk. There's two of them. One is the last time she failed, and the second is the time she made it. Very inspiring woman. Check it out. But this this article um, from 2014, um, there's this little paragraph, and apparently Diana is on a plane, and I guess the man sitting next to her recognizes her and strikes up a conversation. And he says to her, gosh, you must really love swimming. Um, and I should give you some context. It takes over two days. I think it took her the morning, the, the, the morning of the third day to make it. I mean, it's, it's, it's nonstop swimming for days. He goes, you must really love swimming, she recalled. And then she said, I don't know. Uh, I just finished an 18-hour swim and was vomiting throughout it. I can't say it's that I love the feeling of swimming. I do love having an elevated spirit and having being engaged with the planet more than the experience of swimming itself. And I just thought there's something in that. So from the tactical side, what I was talking to you about is like evidence is confidence, thanks to Adam, right? She is in there doing these training swims. She went 18 hours. She was vomiting throughout it. She made it. She did it. It builds her confidence for her ability to attack this endeavor that she's failed four other times at. But this line, I don't know that I love the feeling of swimming as much as I love having this elevated spirit and being engaged with the planet more than the experience of swimming itself. And I, and I thought there's evidence of her ability, but there's this accidental opening to something greater and what you're finding along the way. And I'm telling you what, what you're starting to build confidence in through trying things is going to show up everywhere else in your life and in bigger ways, you're going to uncover things that you didn't even know were available to you because of it. And my favorite thing, 
is what you see about yourself. And perhaps some of my own fear of this podcast, of the book I'm working on, of my dating life, all these things is being nervous about what I'm going to find. But gosh, I'd really hate to think that we're missing out on life because we're nervous about what's going to be there when we arrive. Isn't that the good part? Like, why do we don't go to the movies because we already know the ending? I would hate it if I knew the ending at the movie theater. I want to be surprised. I want my story to write itself. But I have to be available for that. And so I'm going to tell you what Adam told me. He said, stop looking at such big, big things. The destination, this end-all, be-all. He goes, Start taking big swings at medium things. <laughs> um, Adam's quite a poet in my life. And I thought, okay, medium things, big swings. Go all in on medium things. So the stakes feel a little bit lower. You're not compromising effort. You're not compromising the evidence you're gathering. You're not compromising your life or your experience, but you are gathering evidence and therefore confidence in your ability to do those things and also beyond. And I'm realizing now as I've taken those words and I've already tried it in a few areas that taking these swings are helping me see myself more clearly and also seeing my capability more clearly. I don't have to guess. I don't have doubt. I know. I know because I'm here doing it. And it's the same, like if... As you're listening, I think about like, put yourself in a few scenarios. If you're thinking about working out and there's something that makes you nervous and you try it, let's say it's a squat, like you're going to a class, they're doing squats, you pick up five pound weights, great. You do some reps, you survive the class, you're like, yo, that was pretty good. I did better than I thought. The weights weren't as challenging. I'm actually not that sore. So when you go back, you'll pick up, you know, seven and a half or tens. Think about these swings in your life. That's what I want to give you through my experience this week. I want you to think about where you can take these big swings in medium places. I already used the workouts. Like where can you push a little harder? Where can you pick up more weight? Where can you try and experience a class, a something that you've not kind of dipped your toe into before? Look at dating. If there is something on your heart that you want to say to somebody, if you want to ask someone out that you're afraid of asking, I don't care, whatever it is, be bold. Take a step towards your person. There's a great line in a movie called Green Book. The whole world is waiting on the other person to take the first step. Why not take the first step? Because here's what's cool. Either A, they're going to be thrilled that you did it, and joyfully accept or B, say no for whatever reason. And that's information too. I'm like, oh gosh, I can stop thinking about this guy. Great. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it's, you're released. You're like, okay, I don't have to worry about it anymore. It has nothing to do with my worth. It just has to do with the fact that it's not his timing. It's not his thing, whatever it is. I don't have to know his reason. I just have to know it's a no and I can move on. So either way, remember it's never failure. It's always feedback. We're always just putting ourselves out there to get more information back. I want you to look at hard conversations you want to have. If you're going through a separation, I want you to think about that. I want you to challenge yourself this week in in the ways that are big, but in medium topics. Start to do that. Start to get in that mindset. Start to take those things on. I cannot express enough that As you start to do it, right, when you do more, you'll get more. Collect the information. See how great you are, right? You have evidence of your capability. And know, regardless of outcome of some of these swings you're taking, it's feedback. It's never failure. I have have not done well at a lot of things. (laughs) Many of you don't know this is actually a great story. Many of you don't know, I walked on my college rowing team at, at, at KU. I 
had done sports my whole life. I'm like, I'm going to do something different. I'm in a row. I'm going to be awesome. And let me tell you, I was terrible. And for over two years, I was by far the worst person on the team. I would work hard, but man, I was not good in a boat. I was not, car- I was not mentally good in that kind of workout environment. Like for me, top speed starts and ends at about 30 to 60 seconds. And this would be eight minutes long, you know, and I was terrible. And I'll never forget, we shared the same weight room and the throwing coach and the rowing coach were buddies. And I was lifting and I was always better at lifting weights, right? Short bursts of effort. And my throwing coach, Doug Reynolds, still a dear friend to this day, saw me lifting and thought, wow, this girl must be like a new junior, you know, JUCO transfer, new new recruit, how amazing. And the rowing coach was like, oh God, she works hard, but man, she's terrible. (laughs) And Doug, my track coach, just saw my power, saw my central nervous system, saw an opportunity to use my strengths elsewhere. So he approached me about hammer throw. And I started terrible. But man, guys, I walked on, ended up doing so well that I earned a scholarship, got second at Big 12 Conference, went to nationals. And all because I was willing to put myself out there with rowing. It was the only path to get to my throwing career. You can't, you don't know what's beyond the medium big swings, right? The medium things that we swing big at because you don't know what's beyond it. So stay in those mediums this week, take the big swings, get the feedback and be excited about how your story starts to write itself because you're actually putting yourself out there and you're actually trying. It's an exciting time when you live like this. I'm here to support you through it. Thank you for letting me share it. Thanks for hanging with us and for being a part of our world. Be sure to head over to our website, smallthingsincommon.com and subscribe. But don't worry, we're not going to flood your inbox. We just want to keep you up to date with new episode releases and fun perks for being loyal listeners. Okay, bye.